10 things you think you know about street fighters. We found this great list online of the characteristics of an untrained fighter, what to look for. So we thought we'd break it down, so keep watching. So we came across this golden tablet on the internet, the 10 commandments of street fighting. <laughs> 10 commandments. It says here, these are the attributes of the most capable untrained street fighters that you're likely to encounter in a fight. Let's dig into them. So first off, they say they have a lot of experience and even enjoy fighting. Potentially they grew up fighting. I think there are some people that actually enjoy fighting. They actually get a thrill out of it and a buzz, which is difficult because it's a hard thing to fight. If you're fighting someone that enjoys the process of fighting, you're essentially fueling and enabling what they want. You're in their world. Exactly. Next off is that they fight dirty, they're aggressive and vicious. Street fighters, very different. Obviously they are vicious, very aggressive, hyper-aggressive at times. Fighting dirty does come part of it. There's lots of tricks and you learn that through experience. So then this author goes on to say that they're likely to grab you with one hand and drill you with the other. Is that a control technique? What, what are they referring to here? Okay, so the grabbing is basically to create shock and awe. You grab someone. I mean, I teach this tactic quite often. Mm. So you grab someone and what it does is it gets a person to flinch a little bit. So you're giving them two stimuli to experience the grab and then the punch. Okay. So that creates a little bit of a sort of a hesitation. It's a good trick, actually. It's a nice trick. It works really, really well. The other issue is a leveraging arm. You mm -hmm. use the other arm to grab or keep the person away. And in doing so, you could be hitting them and hitting them and keeping them in control. So you can stop them from moving away from you because yes. you can hit them. It's like a hockey punch. Yeah. Or you can push them, keep them at distance so you could keep hitting them. But either way, you've got control over them. They can't get away. So you're being manipulated by this person. So they could be keeping you at bay, pulling out a weapon and going for a stab. Wow. So it allows an easy escalation keeps distance, manages your escape, and it allows them to attack you. Don't forget they're holding you to stop you from escaping. That's really important to note. So the consequences of this can be dire. Very. They attack first without hesitation and likely whilst you're talking or when you look away or when you turn your back. Potentially ties into the fighting dirty, but what do you think? Someone that enjoys fighting, has intention to fight, has got the experience, and basically has aggression and a vicious state of mind, turn your back, you give them any inkling of weakness, they're going to punch you. Observation from the original article that we're reading from is that they will attack without hesitation. They're not waiting for you to make the first move. No. And they're, they're waiting for the right opening, but they're going to take it as soon as they see it. So zero to 100 straight away. Then the article goes on to say that they rely on size and strength if they have it to overpower you and potentially will use things like headlocks, maybe things we see as not so technical. It is quite natural to get someone in a headlock. You go for a punch and you swing that punch, the arm hooks and where it hooks, it naturally clambers onto the back of the head and it's quite natural to grab. When it comes to a real fighting we go gross motor and grabbing someone and squeezing them and holding them is a gross motor action because our fine motor skills are actually diminished through stress adrenaline anxiety okay. and so on so it's quite natural to use your strength to overpower someone so an untrained fighter someone that's grown up in the streets yes is more likely to grab hold of you rely on their strength rely on their power and in doing so, it may characterize itself as a headlock. Does it come from an element of wanting to not just dominate you, but control you? Because a headlock, you feel like you've diffused this other person's ability to, to attack you. you. You've got them in a place of, of kind of pacification. It's just brute strength, really. Yeah. I mean, we fight as animals. Now, the author of the article goes on to say that these street fighters are often rage fighters. And uh, though the more experienced of them know how to channel it, you often are going to see bouts of rage. Rage is this sort of channeling of anger. I think the easiest way to, to relate it to is someone that has a, has a, a steroid rage. Right, it's a bit more untethered. It's yes. out, it almost seems out of their control. It's un uncontrollable, exactly. Okay. It's like boom, a big explosion. Very dangerous individuals, though, because they have no control of what they're doing. So there are a percentage of people, I wouldn't agree that all untrained fighters are rage fighters, but it would be a characteristic that, that would be prevalent. Something to look out for. Definitely something to look out for. Looking more now at technique, aside from these different characteristics, that the 
untrained street fighter will throw punches in bunches, starting likely with a looping rear hand, and they're usually berserker-like linear headhunters were the word was the wording used in the article, which I found interesting. I don't really even know what they mean by that. Untrained street fighters tend to loop for the head much more. They'll be headhunting and swinging for the hills. The next point actually on that is that they swing for the fences and they do big shots or they use big shots, but with little stamina. I don't agree with the issue of stamina. The reason being is because a fight is usually three seconds. Most people burn out after a few seconds. And that's even a trained fighter can burn out in a high stress environment. You imagine you put weapons, chaos, maybe a highly skilled fighter might go five to six seconds at high intensity. Keeping with technique, the writer of the article says that they uh, are likely to hook wide right, wide left, wide right, and then left and just back and forth, which I guess is kind of in keeping with what you've said. They're going for the head. This is chaotic and they're just going to keep one after the other swinging. For if you look at any videos on YouTube, unfortunately we can't show you these videos because we'll be removed from YouTube. Essentially, you'll always see left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. You'll see continuous swinging, usually starting with the dominant arm and then caving in with the other arm. It's so common. And if you're learning to defend yourself, learning to deal with punches, essentially you need to focus on dealing with big looping left, right, left, right punches. The final point is again a technique point here, which is that if they're going to tackle you, which you've said before you see time and time again in YouTube fight videos or fight videos online, people getting tackled, it's more likely to be a spear, like a football tackle, as opposed to a double leg takedown wrestling style. Uh, and then when they take you to the ground, the, those ground and pound attacks are likely to be big wind up punches or lots of little punches. Do you think that they're, they're really making a good point there? It's a good point. You're less likely to see a double leg takedown in terms of someone putting a knee down, touching down, going low un under the knee towards the ankle. You're more likely to see a rugby tackle or in America, a football tackle where you take the guy, you hit them at high speed, you take them off their feet and they drop to the ground or you pick them up and you slam them. You're more likely going to see that. Using momentum, not technique. Exactly. It's very right. different. And that fits in with the earlier. So this author's got a good idea. I think this is a good scheme. They're building a real picture of this person. Exactly. Yeah. You know, someone that's aggressive, mm. untrained, that's big, uh, strong potentially, but using their weight strength. So they're going to come at you like a freight train. So that's a good observation. I think that's, that's sound. Okay, and then with the ground and pound, do you agree that those punches are either going to be one of two things, big wind-up punches or, or lots of little rabbit punches, as the author calls it? It's either ground or pound or rabbit punches. It's one or the other. You know, you're saying they're going to do both. It's not clear definition, is it? it? It's not clear. Hard to predict at this on point. On this one, yeah, what yeah. the behaviour would be. If I'm going to rationalise this, perhaps, I've not seen much difference in the street, you know, when I've analysed videos uh, and... Basically, when we've gone through it, I've not really seen much of a difference between the two. So they're probably right. You'll see a bit of both. So the takeaway is that there is an overall picture of the person you're likely to face that's untrained. He's likely to be aggressive, go first. He's likely to use the speed and pure viciousness of intention to overwhelm you. So your preparation should be based on these points that we've gone through. These aren't our observations. These are other people's observations. I've mentioned these many times in our videos, but these are points that you should take on board. Thanks for watching.